Hey there, my name is John Hanlon and I will be reviewing today the Sony HXR MC2000U video camera and I don't normally do reviews, in fact this is my first one, but when I was looking on YouTube and I was trying to figure out which camera to buy, I could not find any decent reviews on this camera. So I promised myself that once I got it and had used it for a couple months that I would put up a review for other people that were trying to make a decision. So hopefully this helps you out. So let me start off with where I purchased the camera. I got it from B&H Video, bnhvideo.com, and it was $16.50 is the price I bought it for. Uh, I actually was considering going to, I almost bought it from another website, but I called them up and I was ready to purchase it, and they started in about how it wasn't going to have a warranty, the battery wasn't as big. Basically, they were... I don't know where they were getting them from, but they were able to sell them for a couple hundred dollars less because they were not official Sony retailers and uh, they didn't basically have an official product. So feel free to go out and look for the best price. Just be warned that there are sites out there that are selling them from cheaper that are, and you're not going to get what you're expecting. B&H had the very cheapest that I could find and their customer service is also absolutely ideal. I called them up with lots of questions about this camera before I bought it and they answered all of them. So if you have any questions about it, first of all, you can leave them. Feel free to leave a comment in the in this video and I will try to answer them. But actually, I would suggest calling B&H because they will know more about it than I will and uh, they have they they were great to work with. So let's get into the camera. I have owned it about 2 months and maybe used it about 10 times or so. Uh, in that period of time and I have done everything from interviews with uh, you know one-on-one -on -one interviews to a uh, basketball game a play uh, so I've tried to use it uh, in all different circumstances and this is the first shoulder mount camera I have used and I had a Canon HV20 that recorded onto tape uh, was my previous camera that was my first camera so if you're looking for a comparison I'm not going to be able to, to do that well because the HV20 which is several years old and records on a tape and is a much smaller camera is not really comparable to this uh, Sony MC2000U but I can just give you my opinion of what, what I think so far of the camera. So first off I don't know if this was a misunderstanding on my end but for some reason I thought it was going to have a it was going to have the capability to zoom with the ring. So it has a ring on the camera, which is really nice. It lets you control different features. It, it, you can control the focus, white balance, exposure, AE shift, iris priority, and shutter speed priority with the ring. And, it, and the menu settings are really, really nice. You can change it real easily while you're recording. I really like the menu system. It's real simple. Uh, but anyway, for some reason, I thought it was going to have the capability to zoom with that ring, which is not a huge deal, but the camera does not zoom with the ring the zoom is on the there's a zoom on the top on the handle and there is also a zoom kind of at your the hand rest uh where you would normally use the zoom while it's on your shoulder so that was my first i don't know if really a complaint but that was my first thing that was kind of a disappointment and then also again i'm not sure if this is something that all sony cameras don't have since i was coming from canon but it has no audio meter on the screen or in the the eyepiece so you cannot see whether there is any audio coming into the camera, which is uh, seems like a pretty common sense thing to do to me, uh, that you would want to see the level of the audio coming into the camera, um, you know, just at a glance, without, if you happen to not have headphones with you or, or whatever. But that also, at the same time, has forced me to uh, be wearing headphones since just to verify that the audio is coming in. And there's no built-in mic into the camera. You have the, the mic plugs into the camera. So uh, you got to make sure that there's audio coming in. But that was kind of a complaint there. I'm not sure why they wouldn't include an audio meter just so you can see if the, you know, at a glance. But that certainly isn't a huge deal. And like I said, you should have headphones probably plugged in anyway. So the last complaint I would have about the camera is that the screen is pretty small. I don't have the exact, I believe it's 2.7 inches I think is the screen. I may be wrong on that. I don't have the specs in front of me. But the screen is pretty small on the camera. Um, this, I don't know again how big of a deal this is to you. A lot of people were complaining about it in the the comments and the reviews that I had seen. Which by the way, go check those out again on B&H. has dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds of reviews by the time you look at it about this camera um but so definitely check those out but that was one of the complaints i saw and the screen definitely is small i think they 
uh, it's not that huge of a deal to me, and especially since you're looking through the eyepiece frequently anyway, but that is a, it is a pretty small screen. And then as far as the things I like about the camera, which far outweigh the things I don't like, you know, no zoom ring, no audio meter, and a small screen are definitely kind of annoying things, but they're not that huge of a deal. And the pros definitely outweigh the cons, at least for me. And my biggest surprise about the camera was the awesome stabilization. I cannot stress this enough. The Sony stabilization on the camera just really stunned me. Um, I think combined with the the shoulder mount style that's just of course going to give you a more stable video than holding something in your hands and this is, again is the first camera I have owned that had the shoulder mount but the stabilization on it is just spectacular and I, I can't say enough how awesome it is and I think that is the the coolest thing the number one thing that I would tell people who are thinking about this you know the stabilization on this camera is just great and I don't know if that's a Sony thing that they're now putting in all their cameras like this uh, but for this camera, the stabilization, I could not ask for any better. And that is definitely the number one plus about the camera, at least in my opinion. One of the complaints I saw about the camera was that it does not do very good in low light. And again, keep in mind, I'm not really comparing it against cameras of a similar price. But in my opinion, it, it does very well in low light, you know, as much as can be expected from a camera, uh, especially at this price point. And it does actually have a night low light setting on it. I have not played around with that setting much. I was, there was only once that I was really in low light without a light on the camera, but, and I did not, I did not have time to play around with the low light setting, but it actually did very well considering the amount of light I had in the room and what I was trying to do. So low light for me has not been an issue, though there are other people, uh, like I said, in the B&H comments and other places that I saw reviews that were saying low light is not very good on this camera. Take their opinion into account, of course, because they probably have reviewed more cameras than I have. But from my opinion, the low light is as much as it would need for me. And of course, you really should have a light on the camera anyway. Um, no camera is going to do really good in the dark. But especially with that low light setting on the camera, I think it does very well. As far as video quality, I have found it to be very, very good, at, better than I ha would have expected. You know, of course, take into account you get what you pay for here. Uh, for a under $2,000 camera, I thought this was very, very good video quality. And it, a lot of it comes back to the stabilization, like I mentioned, at least for me. Uh, the stabilization is so amazing that it drastically improves the video quality. But as far as just the quality of the video itself, I thought it was very, very well. Again, I'm not comparing it. I don't have a comparison test. I have not done a comparison test. But just from what I've seen, what I expected out of the camera, it has met my expectations. There's also this little thing called DVD Direct that the, that the camera has that you can plug it into your computer and basically burn a DVD right, you know, without any editing or without anything in between. I haven't played around with this because I would never have a need to do that where I would want to just bypass editing and take the raw files. If you had a reason to do that and just wanted the raw files on a DVD, I guess that would be a plus of this camera. Again, I'm pretty sure that's probably a Sony thing that many of Sony's cameras have, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that too much into effect, but if I ever needed it, I guess it's nice that it's there, but I can't see myself using it, but your situation may be different. Overall, like I said earlier, I think the pros far outweigh the cons of this camera, and I would highly suggest it if you're looking for something in the $2,000 range or even, you know, it's a few hundred dollars less than that from B&H, and at the time you're listening to this, it may even be less than that. So I would highly suggest this camera to anyone looking in that price range for something similar. Uh, obviously, it's a shoulder mount camera, so it's a little bit bigger than a normal handheld camera. Actually, it's a, it's a lot bigger than a normal handheld camera, especially what I was coming to in the little HV20. Uh, but I, for what this is exactly what I was looking for, I was wanting something shoulder mount that had a lot better stabilization, that I had a little bit more settings uh, that I could change and switch around. And the settings menu is worth mentioning. I found the settings menu to be just ideal for me because it is very simple. A lot of people were complaining that it could not do enough as much as they were wanting and there wasn't a lot to it. For that, for those exact reasons is why I like it. So I guess if you're wanting to do more with the camera, you, this may not be the thing for you, but it's perfect for me. There's simple settings. 
Uh, you can change the ring, what the ring changes while the camera is recording. I think I mentioned that earlier. And uh, the settings are really nice inside the menu. Um, if you're looking for something that can do a little more, this may not be the camera for you. If you're looking for a ton of manual controls, you may want to think about something else. But if you want something simple that also gives you more control than a little handheld camera would give you, I would highly suggest this. There are a couple accessories also that I would highly, highly suggest buying. Uh, first of all is a tripod. Obviously, you're going to need a tripod for almost everything you do, especially since something that I discovered coming from a Canon handheld camera is that you cannot push down the zoom on a... You cannot push down the zoom that's built into the camera when it's on a tripod without moving the camera, if that makes sense. So on the HV20, I just would use the zoom that's built into the camera, but on this camera, the MC2000U, you need some kind of a zoom that's built into the handle of the tripod or else you're going to shake the video uh, by zooming with the camera. So the tripod, and I did a bit of research and it was very confusing on which tripods would work with this camera because there are different types of plugs and there apparently is a plug that Sony used to use that they no longer use and some that are for the consumer cameras and some that are for the pro cameras. But the VCT1170RM is the tripod I ended up going with. It's I got it for $250 off eBay, which is, at least for me, a pretty expensive for a tripod. That's much more than I've ever spent for a tripod in the past. But it, ha it is a really, really nice tripod, and it also has the zooming built into the handle, which was the most important thing for me. And it's uh, So that tripod is the cheapest one, that is the cheapest model currently out that supports this camera. So there are similar well what look like similar tripods that are cheaper that have the zoom built into the handle but they will not work with this camera at least as of my recording this in march 2012 uh if sony comes out with they may come out with something new but right now the vct 1170 rm i bought it for 250 dollars off ebay is the cheapest tripod that will work for a handle zoom for this camera then I also just got a, I have not had a lot of time to play around with it, but it looks really, really nice. A light that attaches to the top and a lot of the, I let, read a lot of the reviews because I did not have a light from my last camera and I read a lot of reviews about what is the best fairly cheap video light and a lot of them were saying, you know, around $100 is a good one. I got this one for $30 off eBay. It is called the Aperture AL160, A-P-U-T-U-R-E, AL160, and I highly, highly suggest it. It's extremely bright. It takes AA batteries. It has a, you can adjust the brightness on the camera. It gives you a battery meter. It has a nice shoe that you can adjust the, uh, the, the angle of the light. It's a very, it's big, and so it gives you a, a good, solid, uh, projection not projection whatever you would call it the good solid light off of it and i highly suggest that between the tripod and the light uh those are the two accessories that i would say must buy for this camera so i think that pretty well does it for my review if you have any other questions that you think i might be able to answer feel free to leave a comment below i'm on my email all the time so i should be able to quickly get back with you but i hope this review helped you out and just real quickly to tell you about something else that I do, if you're into Google News or Google stuff, I do a podcast every week called Google at a Glance, and you can check that out at netcaststudio.com. But thanks, everybody, for listening. I hope this helped you out.